Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studio. It is a chilly January Saturday. Uh, I have been casting epoxy stuff most of the day and now I'm working on the desk that you saw me start the other day. And we're gonna talk about doing repair work and stuff like that. So um, you're gonna have to be a little patient because I'm on a tripod that is, well, a pain. For, for want of a better word. Um, so we're gonna work with repairing our desk drawers. We're going to work on fixing the feet. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I do for all of it. So um, this is not, if, if you're looking for colorful and glamorous, that's not what this video is. This video is hard work, the grunt work before the critty stuff gets done. So if you're up for that, stick around. We're going to talk about all of it. We will be using a Dremel, so I will warn you before I use any of the power tools so you can turn your volume down because I know nobody likes to hear that Dremel sound. Um, and then we're going to talk about divots, repair, chewed feet, all of that sort of stuff. Oh my gosh. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you here, Florence, Kay, Maddie. Hey, how are you all? All right. So, um, and I'm working with this tripod that you've had seen me work with before that kind of shakes because it's on a gooseneck. So be patient if it gives you a little motion sickness. No, it gives it to me too. All right, so we're gonna turn around here. Uh, I'm gonna angle down so that you can see my work surface. All right, this is the top of the desk. Everything's been cleaned. Everything that's on here is safe for me to have on this clean surface. So the first thing we've got to do is finish taking apart the drawer fronts. Everything I have, I have already done all the cleaning with all surfaces except this one because um, I thought I'd show you what the, the fun stuff you can kind of find under the under uh, hardware. So this is an old piece. This is, this is original hardware. Uh, I don't throw out any of this hardware, but I often don't use the same hardware on the piece it came from. So I have to take the old screw out. And I'm sure many of you have taken off hardware before, but I know some people haven't. So they find um, taking stuff apart like this a little intimidating. So I'm gonna show you. Most of these knobs are held on with screw, screws or nails. You're gonna take them off either way. I have set this down because as you can tell, just unscrewing it doesn't take it apart. And that's because there's a little teeny nail down here. So I set it down, give it a little tug just to loosen it up from the surface because sometimes with these old desks, oh, I have to pull a little bit. Um, stuff gets, after decades, stuff gets crudded up under these. When I took this one off, there was a ring of brown nasty stuff and it, I actually had to scrape it off with my screwdriver because it was so bad. You know, I could have used another tool, it's just the screwdriver was there. I keep, make try to make sure when I pull it off, I keep the nail attached just in pulling it out because I have one of these little nails flipped around here on the floor. A, you don't want them going through the bottom of your shoes, and B, they're what makes this hardware reusable. It's old, it's tarnished, the screws are rusty, I don't even mess with them until I need them for another job. The next thing I'm going to do now, I did clean part of this with uh, the mineral spirits, but I'm, I still have to spray it down with alcohol to get the last bits of everything. And I'm going to hit it again with the scrubber uh, just in case. Now, if you remember my cleaning process from the other day, it's spritzing down. And I put mineral spirits into a, a pump sprayer similar to the way I do with alcohol. Uh, if you don't want to take the chance of inhaling any of the mist, put on a particle mask. You should have that on anyway with some of these chemicals. And then I clean the whole thing off. And that's just from that drawer. Part of that is old shellac and varnish. Part of that is a lot of years of dirt. And there's crud right there. All right, and so now I've cleaned every bit of this off. I just want to get right there because I don't like what's on there. 
little bit of stuff. All right, so we are cleaned, and this surface is now ready for a primer or a dark base paint. Now, this is many colors of wood. If I were to paint white over this, I couldn't guarantee that there wouldn't be a tannin bleed or a bleed from um, stain. I don't strip down to the bare wood if I'm not refinishing, so I need to figure out what I'm doing to make sure that I don't have any bleeds. To cover furniture that you think is gonna bleed. Um, shellac, not just regular shellac, Yes, you can use the regular shellac that you find at the hardware store. It's made by Zinzer and it's an excellent product. It is de-waxed shellac, which is important because if it's not a de-waxed shellac, you will have resistance and chipping with your paint products. Also, if you use a white shellac-based primer, that is de-waxed as well and that's why it works with other products. But I have found when I use stuff like, um, Kathy, I'll answer your question, the best way to polish your wood furniture. I'll answer that one in just a second. Let me get through what I'm talking about with the cleaning and the waxed shellacs and stuff like that. I buy my shellac myself, de-waxed in flake and make my own. And there's a reason for it. One, because I can make the strength of my shellac the what, what I want it to be, and I think I've shared mixing shellac with you all before. There's a video of me doing it. Um, but if I use the same measurements that I could buy at a, out of a can of Zinzer in the hardware store, that shellac is often too thick, too challenging for most paints, even if it is de-waxed. Um, I have found that if I'm going to use the Zinzer shellac from the hardware store, I'm going to take some denatured alcohol and thin it by about a third. That gives me a much better shellac to work with. Understand, too, that shellac cleans up with alcohol, is dissolved by alcohol, and is its own solvent in alcohol. You can't use water on it. You can't use um, oil-based products like mineral spirits, that doesn't do anything to shellac. Alcohol, 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 alcohol. That is what works with shellac. So I personally make my own so that I have the right consistency. And I'm, I I don't want to go in too deep to about mixing shellac and all that stuff. I've done it before. If you have questions and you'd like me to write it out, post a question and I will answer it. Um, now, Kathy just asked me, let me go back to that question. I can't read for squat without my glasses on, but I can't, um, I don't, if I take my glasses off, I'm a little blurred in the, in the camera, so I stop seeing myself. Um, the best way to polish wood furniture, I, I, I've seen spray beeswax, and I think that's lovely to wax furniture, but generally, I'm not a furniture waxer. Um, I like to oil wood because I think, find the oil penetrates the wood and keeps it fresh and keeps it from getting brittle and dry. Now I have oiled and then waxed wood, that works, but you have to apply your oil, let it sit in, let it absorb, let it you know become completely one with the furniture and then come back like a day later and wax it. Um. <laughs> Okay. Oh God, I love David. Um, I I meet I mix I I'm having a little hard re time reading what you're talking about with the primers. Um, he's he, David is a longtime finisher and has known me for many years, and a lot of us old school folks we like our oil primers, but I'm going to tell you um, they stink. And so if you're, if you're odor sensitive, they're, not, they're gonna be a challenge for you. Um, my favorite non-super -stink, stinky primer that is a hybrid water base is called um, Gripper. It's made by Benjamin Moore. It's a waterborne alkyd, which means you can wash your brushes out, but it cures hard like an oil base and you can paint water-based products over it. But that's sort of, we're kind of jumping ahead right now. 
we are not going to talk about primers until we finish with the repairs. I'm talking, I just wanted to explain the whole shellac thing and what could happen if I, do, if I'm, now that I've cleaned all this, I know I've probably broken down through all the old varnish and I'll have cracks in this and I could have product leaching through and shellac is the way to go. No water-based primer, no anything else will keep tannins and oils from bleeding through your white and light colored paints the way a shellac primer does. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody talks about all their other primers. I have tried them all. What really works if you're having problems with bleed is shellac. It's old fashioned, it's smelly, it's alcohol, it's a little messy to work with, but it is what works. So not everything is as easy as some of these other people like to tell you where you just paint stuff on. It doesn't work that way. If you want a good quality finish, you have to do the good quality work. All right, now that I'm off my soapbox on that, you've listened to me talk enough, we're gonna do a little um, repair work. Okay, I gotta put my glasses back on because now I gotta see what I'm doing. Um, obviously, if you look at these drawers, they were glued more than once. Um, you can tell some of this has been broken. Some of this has been jagged up. We're, what we got to do first, this one's fine. This one had seems to have come off and not had a lot of problems. This one, though, I got to take a Dremel and clean all of that cruddy glue off. I'm not using sandpaper. I'm not using um, a sanding block because I can't get down in here with that. So we're going to pull out the Dremel. And you can buy like inexpensive ones of, of these, the little um, stylus Dremels that were, that you might see like your manicurist use. I have one at home when I do my own nails, that's what I use. Um, but Dremels run like anywhere from 25 to $65, depending on how elaborate your setup is. And I just threw my Dremel case on the floor, gosh. You know, here I am worrying about making messes and I'm throwing things everywhere. All right, so I have to plug it in. And where are my bits? Uh, now, clearly, I accumulate a lot of tools and stuff to fix things. So um, that shouldn't surprise a whole lot of people that I have a ridiculous number of Dremel tools and Dremel tips and all that other stuff. All right, we're going to start with a little sanding tip. I need a good little bit. Now, if you've never worked with a Dremel, these, these are heavy. So you have to get used to having weight in your hand when you work with it. If you don't like something this heavy in your hand, look into the Dremels that are called the Stilos that you might use for, um, at, you might see at a nail, they, nail shop. They do have a lot of torque. You get a lot of use out of them but they're designed for smaller jobs and would have worked just as well on this. All right, I'm gonna turn this on in a second. So if you have sensitive ears, please turn your volume down. You will not be happy listening to this. I got that off of the outer part, but I still need a small tip to get in here where the glue has been built up by other repairs. Because if I don't get that out, I'm not gonna get a good bond. And I'll have to wipe this down now that I've got sawdust all over it again. Uh, that, but that's, you know, that doesn't phase me. Let's see what I've got for Dremel tips to go into long, deep crevices. I'm going to try a grinder tip. If that doesn't work, I'll figure something else out. I have a gazillion little tips in here, and they all will fit in that space. All right, noise is coming back on, so turn your volume down if you don't want to hear it.
I need to go in and see what I've done in there. I got most of the mess out. That's good. Now that drawer front and this is fine, but I remember that the drawer for this also had crud on it. I just got to find that drawer because I've knocked everything all over the place. Okay, so as you can see, you've still got glue all in here too that I'm gonna have to fix. So again, I'm going in with the tool, so turn your volume down if you don't wanna hear this. stronger grinding ability right there. There is a big old glo a glob of glue. I'm not impressed with whoever did that repair. I'm sure it was somebody knocked, broke the drawer front, just did it with, you know, what they had, which is what most of us who don't do furniture do. me a long time ago, how do I know to do this stuff? Well, some of it's classes, some of it's, you know, somebody showing me, but some of this is just plain old fashioned common sense. Because if you have globs of glue on a drawer that you're trying to repair, how is the repair going to grab properly? Hey, Tony, nice to see you here. Thank you for popping in. All right, I got to clean that little bit of sawdust off of there. I'm going to put my... Now, I may be a slob in many things. I may drop things all over the place. I may be a klutz. But I actually do work hard to take care of my power tools and their piece, their accessory items. I don't leave them lying around. You won't find them, you know, flopping around in my studio. I put them away as soon as I'm done. Why? Because there's always too much stuff floating around. Something gets in the mechanisms. I could spill epoxy on them. I could dump a bucket of water on them. Um, I've lost <laughs> tools to floods because I didn't put them away properly. These are my investment in my business. So I put my tools away. I'm gonna close everything up and set them to the side here before I go home tonight. They will be in their proper spot in um, my shelves so I can find it wherever I need it. Um, my biggest, I, I, and this is me, the more space I have, the more stuff I get. So the more stuff I get, the more room I have to find and the more organized I have to be so that I know where all my tools are. And while that seems OCD, you all have seen me, and you know that's not it. I'm just trying to keep from, you know, doing stuff t more than once. All right, let me dust off all this stuff on here. And we're going to repair a drawer. Now, let's see. I um, Drawers are challenging because you can't use regular clamps on them the way um, I use on other stuff. Now, i got to find what I meant this thing. So... I use bungee cords. They're wonderful, and I get these. These are new because my husband has stolen all of my bungee cords. I went to do this. I was actually planning to do this for yesterday's live, and I went to get my bungee cords, and I had one. I had dozens of them in my car, and somehow my son and my husband had gotten them all. So I brand new bungee cords even to work with today. I love these flat ones because they won't roll. 
Okay, I got flat bungee cords. They're super easy to work with. Um, and they'll wrap around stuff. And you know, you have to try each piece to see which size bungee cord works best. Keep the jar because then you can put them away nice and neatly because otherwise they sit in a heap and they get caught in things like my hair. So, <laughs> um, you know, use, use some common sense and keep things tidy. I'm obviously on my telling everybody to be tidy in their studio kit today because I can't seem to be doing it for myself. All right, so the next thing I do is I put this together and see how it fits. Now we have some gapping at the drawers, but it does all fit together. We're a little loose down here. And you look at that, we're a little loose. But um, I'm not going to glue all of this together because back here our seams are good. So the next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take some wood glue. Oops, I forgot, they're over here. You can watch me go to a drawer. Oh, excitement. I keep plastic syringes for gluing. I also keep boxes of razor blades for cutting and I keep the tips for the syringes in here so that I don't lose them. Now, let's see if I can find one that's got a big enough opening or if I'm gonna to have to go do something a little differently. I need a little different tip that I have in there. buy plastic needleless syringes all over the internet. I get my pick up mine on Amazon. You can get them just about anywhere. And the point of having them, and let's see if I can make this work so I can get some glue in the syringe. All right, that's not gonna work the way I want it to, so we're gonna find another way. It's not like I don't have a million tools and containers and stuff to do this. Um, I'm going to put some wood glue, if it'll come out, which it will eventually. If I have to bully it out, I do. This is always me with the glue tubes, isn't it? Nothing wants to quite open as easily as I need it to. There we go. You can use a paintbrush and paint this in. You can use a syringe and shoot it in. I just find a bottle this big really hard to handle. So I prefer uh, loading a syringe with glue and then going into the crevices. Okay, so I've got some glue in here. I'm gonna go shoot it into this area. I need some more. Clearly. But you don't want to go too crazy with it because if you get too much on here, it's going to seep out everywhere and then you have to do a huge cleanup. Um, I ex fully expect I'll have to wipe some glue down, but not a ton. because I've got it shooting in here. And it's, you know, I don't have a perfect seam or anything because this is gonna squish and spread out. It does need some more down in there though. I'm looking at it right now and I can see it does. Come on, Maury. Now see, if I weren't doing a live, I'd take, you know, 15, 20 minutes to pour out some glue, load up the syringe, you know, go through all of that. But since we're on a live, I kind of have to do it while you're watching me because I was busy doing other projects before I went live. There we go. Okay, so now that's in there. It's snug, but we don't have, you know, great corners in here. I may still have to come in here and build those corners because you can see there's light coming through. Um, right in here, there's light. 
I don't know if I can get it so you can catch the light coming through. Yep, there you go. You can see the light coming through those corners. So that's gonna continue to be a challenge and it's kind of fractured and broken in here, but we've got a good start. So I'll probably have to do some rebuilding. Uh, now I gotta figure out which bungee cord I want to strap around this because I don't have clamps that are gonna hold that well, but I will have a bungee cord that'll do a great job. All right, let's see if I can get it around. Oh, sorry, it's in my lap because I need the, the leverage. Bungeed, bungeed, nice, flat. And you're gonna leave that on, well, I'm gonna leave it on probably until Monday because, you know, or Tuesday, because tomorrow and Monday are my days off. Ugh. I dropped the glue, I dropped everything. Uh, we're gonna glue that other drawer. Gotta put some more glue in here. Come on, in you go. Thank you. You know, I just flip glue everywhere too. Thank God it's a studio and not my living room. My poor husband, before we had, I was able to build a studio in our building before we moved into this studio. I used to do this stuff like in the living room and dining room and I made him insane because I flip stuff everywhere. You all see me, I, I spill. That's really not one of my best characteristics. And I just, he just had to live with the mess. So again, I'm shooting the glue in with the syringe and I'm gonna need more. Who knew that all those years of giving myself allergy shots would pay off in uh, being able to glue a drawer. Okay, come on, down you go. Now this is the time of year I'm normally planning some sort of vacation somewhere warm. Not this year, not until, you know, the vaccines are all available for everybody. I'm promising you as soon as it's more, as soon as I can, um, I need some beach time. Come to realize that I'm an East Coaster in a landlocked state who misses the ocean. Lake Michigan at Wild Lovely just isn't the same as being on it, the Atlantic. All right, so we're gonna put that drawer together. Again, it's all fitting in nicely. I don't have any product seeping. I'm gonna grab another bungee, strap together the drawer and let it sit, you know, for a couple days. Normally it says clamp for, uh, you know, you have to check your wood glue brand. This is Tight Bond. I buy it at Home Depot or I get it on Amazon because, you know, if I can't get to Home Depot, what can I get to? Amazon, just like everybody else. And uh, you just want a super durable one. Oops, this is easier to do in my lap, but if I do it in my lap, you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, I think I actually need the slightly bigger one because this drawer is just a little bit deeper. So, I'm gonna take the green one, which is just a little longer. And I try to make sure my bungees are centered so that the pressure is even across the whole thing. You don't want it like off center up top because A, this is dome, so over the course of drying, this could eventually slide down and spring off and then you don't have your clamp. But also you want the pressure consistent on both sides so everything glues down evenly. You don't have it really well anchored here and then slightly lifted on the other side by centering your clamping or your bungee cords. Um, that's how you guarantee an even grab. Now, like I said, I, I know 
I'm gonna have to come back in here. I'm gonna probably have to shoot some more glue in there because again, we can see the inside of this drawer is, I don't know what they did to this drawer, but they beat it up. <laughs> so there's the, that's the answer. I don't know what it is, but it's, they beat it up. Now I'm not restoring the wood, so I have no need to strip it down. There's a lot of veneer on here and marquetry but none of it's in great shape. So the next thing I have to do is repair the feet. There's a couple punch holes that it looks like somebody kind of hit it with a screwdriver or something when they were doing something else. Let me move all of my other stuff out of the way. Thank God you can't see this messy table behind me because I had a whole bunch of stencils fall off of the wall and they're all heaped on my furniture table behind me. All right, let me get all this stuff down and then we're gonna play with some wood putty to work on fixing the legs. And I'm going to show you my technique for doing those kind of repairs. Like I said, this is not, if you were looking for the fun, colorful, glamorous, cute, kitschy, anything, that's not what this live is. This one is the hard work live of lots of furniture repair when you get a piece in. And, you know, I got this desk, my friend never charged me a dime for it. So putting the money, since I don't have any financial investment in it, I don't have any problem putting additional time to repair in it. When you pick up a piece of furniture, either at a thrift store or at a yard sale or, or inherit it, whatever, when you start doing a project like this, if your intent is to resell it, you have to figure out what goes in it so that you know what you can get out of it. Um, sometimes there are pieces that are just so expensive to repair versus the value of what you can sell it for. You, you kind of have to look at it and say, you know what, that one I'm not taking on. But there are pieces that are cool like this where, you know, the, the, ta the table itself was a gimme and I can do the repairs and I can make something awesome with it because I think this kidney bean shape is super cool. And um, whatever investment I put into it time-wise and product-wise, I will be able to recoup in the same All right, sorry for the sound. I got to turn it around because the damage to the feet is on the front. All right, now... I had to lie it on its back. And this is an interesting piece because it has two front feet on either side, but only one back foot. So I'm gonna lay it on its back carefully. I don't wanna slam it. I did indeed clean the insides of the knee well, all of that. Everything has been cleaned. Um, now that I have it on its back, I will start repairing the dog chews on here. This foot over here is particularly bad and I will angle the camera down and zoom it in so you can see it. And then I will also probably on Monday, maybe later come in and there are foot guards on here. Um, let's angle down so you can see what I'm talking about. There are little caps on the bottom of these feet that have to be pulled off. And normally, we're gonna test this right now. Normally you can just stick a screwdriver under them or a small something and pop them out. This may take a little more work, I'm not sure. Oh, nope, it's coming out. These are, look like the original ones, because, yeah, these might be the original ones. These are the original ones. Okay, the ones we see now usually have a little rubber cap and then this nail through the center. These original ones have three spikes and they tap back in, and as you can see, it's rusty and cruddy so that'll go into our hardware bowl and I'll clean them up and see if I'm going to use them for this project or if I'm going to just replace them with all new ones so I don't know I'm going to zoom this in to see if you can get at it a little closer come on zoom now to get the foot in the frame sorry for the wobbling I just got to get it in the frame on here all right, so you can see this foot is badly dog chewed. Uh, it's a little chewed on the other side, but this one looks like the dog just sat there and like made lunch out of it. And I, I've dealt with that before. It's not fun. So you're gonna take wood putty, plastic wood, wood putty. You want to find 
for something that's as thin as this, and this is this is solvent based. It smells. This is plastic wood. And I didn't realize this. They put the label on on my can upside down. So this is plastic wood. This is the lid. Um, and it's solvent and based and it's a little stinky. So uh, definitely use in a well ventilated area. And you're going to start doing this in thin layers. Now this is an old dental tool. You can use whatever. I'm not using the lid stuff. I thought maybe that was still soft, but no, it's not the can product is. And you're going to start slowly. This is going to take a couple of layers. I am not going for perfect the first time. I need this to be in here, worked into the damage, bond to it, and then I can build up another layer until I have got a nice smooth table leg. Now I happen to have this old dental tool. You can use anything that works. And this is gonna have to be sanded. This is not like pretty plaster that you run your blade over and you get this perfect smooth finish. No, this is a structural rebuilding. You gotta work it. It may be chunky. It may look messy for a while. It's gonna need to be sanded, all that fun stuff. And this stuff wants to dry fast too because it's solvent based. So you're going to use a little bit and then just let it cure up. Damn, this stuff stinks. I forgot how much this stuff smells. So remember, I'm painting this, I'm not restoring it. So that gives me a little leeway to make this ugly and messy because I'm not gonna try to match a wood grain. I'm just trying to make this so I have a stable table leg. All right. Come on, get in there. Talking to my projects again. Now, as we get closer to a more finished edge on the table, I mean, finished look on the table, you know, I'll be doing a much cleaner pass the second time around. Right now, I'm just jamming this in and hoping it sticks. And you can see it starts to dry and then I can crumble it. So I have to not play with it too much. You gotta leave it alone. All right, I've done some on there. We're gonna let it dry. And I got a little repair over on this foot. This one has a few chews in it, not a lot. That other one, that's gonna take me a while. I gotta go and I've gotta build the back of the leg and all kinds of stuff. There's, the, the, that somebody's dog really had a field day on that leg. Now, if you cannot handle the idea of rebuilding a leg, you might be able to find um, a leg that matches or, you know, get six legs, cut these off and then put new legs on, cut it off right at this point, right at the joint at the top of the leg. Sorry, you can't see it because I've got it zoomed in. I'll pull that back. I've done that plenty myself. And I'm gonna have to flip this desk because there's damage to the back of the leg that I can't see from this angle. So I'm gonna spend a couple days building this up and then I'll sand it nice and smooth. And I got a piece of fuzz on there. I got fuzz on everything today, even though I cleaned it. Jeez, <laughs> this is why God didn't make me a good cleaner. Makes me obsessive about a few things, but not a great cleaner. All right, now, Now we've got me back. I'm gonna zoom back out, fix the angle here. Okay, so, sorry, it's bobbling. I know that that's, it's me just adjusting the gooseneck. Sorry about the weird angles. 
All right, so now that's going to dry. I'm going to come back. I will rebuild over that spot because the first build is always messy. It's always nasty. So I have to build it up enough so that I can sand it back and make a nice smooth leg out of it. But I, I mean, honestly, that leg is so chewed up, I have to flip it over and build the back of the leg too. So we're gonna leave it alone for now because if I mess with it more, it's already starting to set up. And by messing with it, I'll chip it off. So again, you gotta take your time doing stuff like this. Don't rush it. This isn't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fast furniture flipper. I can do projects really fast, but I don't flip furniture fast without doing, if it, if it needs good repairs, then I take the time. I do the repairs. Oh, thank you for those of you who are making the compliments of my shoes. Oh, you guys are so funny. These are vans. They're not made anymore. And I'm a little heartbroken because I did spill blue paint on them last week. But the blue paint blends with the pattern, so you can't really see it. So thank you. Yes, um, I spend my life in flat shoes, so almost all my sneakers are a little on the kooky side. Uh, all right, I think that covers everything I wanted to do with you guys. Thank you for the compliments on the desk. Thank you for the compliments on my sneakers. Thank you for listening to my tirades about doing things properly. Um, and I hate saying the word properly because that's how my mother used to lecture me. But there is a point where when you're doing something, if you want to become, I would rather be known as the Harry Winston of furniture painters than the Walmart of furniture painters. And that means I have to know how to do it all correctly. And so I'm going to share that with you. What you do with the knowledge I, I'm, I'm not in your I'm not in your studio I can't tell you I'm just telling you what I've learned what I know what works all right everybody uh let me go put my glasses back on let me flip through see if I have any questions that I missed because my back was to you gosh all of you popped in thank you so much oh thanks David I appreciate the kind words yes David David knows how hard I work to get all of these informations out to help you and give you the best results. Okay. Oops, I hit something else that wasn't a question. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. I just want you to, my, my whole goal is to help you guys have the best result possible. Sorry, you're kicking the... the stupid tripod because my feet are in my own way. So really that's it. And of course, you know, if I didn't say, if I said something that didn't make any sense, or if I said it like a couple times and it seemed I was reversing, it's because when I'm concentrating, my I trip over my own tongue. So don't hesitate to ask a question. I will come back. I will explain what I meant because I know I meant something when I said it. Um, and we'll get back to this I'll see you next week. I'll be back in the studio on Tuesday. Well, I'll probably be packing, popping in, doing packing and stuff over the weekend. But I will be back working on a video on Tuesday. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. I'm going to clean up here. And then I'm going to go home and spend the, weekend, the rest of the weekend with my family. All right, everyone, bye-bye.